Hey YouTube, it's Tim Witt. Today I'm going to be modifying the Behringer FCB 1010 foot pedal. Now by all accounts it's a very useful and versatile foot pedal, but there are a couple of problems in terms of the switching effects not actually being reliable enough. So we're going to go through a simple mod that replaces the little switches inside of the pedal, pedal to be more reliable when you switch them and so you're guaranteed uh, a proper switching action. I'm going to be just following some tutorials online of Steve some, for some various websites and also one from Bob Axe who's got a very comprehensive YouTube tutorial video about all these different mods you can do but it's a little rough around the edges so I thought I would do it a little bit cleaner for you guys so you know what's up. The crux of what you're going to be doing is swapping out this little switch here for that little switch there. Huge difference. <laughs> um, let me get right up close. I'll s this is actually not that huge of a difference at all. That's, that's some good old Aussie humour for you. Okay, so you, these are the switches that are already inside the pedal. And then what you're actually doing is swapping them out for ones which are just slightly taller on the top there. So if you go onto eBay and then you actually search for ish. Come on, focus. There. Six millimeter by six millimeter by five millimeter. SPST stands for single pole, single throw. Uh, if you're into your switch terminology, momentary PCB mounted tactile switch. You can get a gajillion of these, a hundred for a dollar eighty, including postage. Now that is that's a pretty good deal. So basically, these ones here are slightly too short, and so you need to replace them with these ones, which are slightly bigger. Uh, also, the hilarity is that these are. The one that the tutorial that I'm following, Bob Axe, these almost seem like they are slightly too big, and so you need to buy some tiny ass little washers to compensate, which are bang here. So Bob Axe recommended three millimeter. Oh man, I can't even pick this up. It's so tiny. Oh yeah, a three millimeter washer there. It just needs to be. Yeah, Big enough to go over the top of these screws inside the unit. We'll get to more of that in a sec. So once you flip your board over, you remove the screws, you take it to the back like so, and you'll be presented with an image that is something like this. So these two PCBs here are where your switches are. And so the problem actually with the non-reliable switching is that it just, the buttons don't connect with the switches quite uh, solidly enough. So that's all you're doing. You're just replacing the switches to be a little bit higher so that they make a better contact with the buttons as you press them. So the, what, you, what you need to do is you uns, unscrew these screws here and these nuts here, which I've done on the top one, so you can see. On the top one you'll need to unplug the circuitry and they've chucked a whole bunch of hot glue in there as well, but if you get to that with a like a Stanley knife or something, you can snap the glue off very easily and then you can get the board out. And so when you flip it over, okay, I got these little dudes here. Okay, so these switches here are what you're going to be replacing. Oh, focus maybe. Yeah. See so one, two, three, four, five, six. And so you got 12 switches in total. So when you flip it back over again, you'll see that each of them have got four little legs here. So you just need to desolder those. You'll need to be handy-ish with a soldering iron and having a um, like a solder removing gun is also very handy. A little suction tube that'll suck the solder right off of that bad boy. So pretty much you, un you desolder the other one, old switches, then you put the new switches on. Now just be uh, careful that like you'll when you take off the switch, you'll flip it over and you'll notice that there's a little, little bit of, oh man, come on, come on, wit, you're better than this. That there's a little line 
on the back of your little switch running across. So that just needs to run horizontally. Make sure that you get that. Uh, get your new switches installed like that. Okay, so you got your switches on the front. Flip it over. Here's where you need to do all of the work. You just need to be desoldering these four, four little legs on each switch. And then you remove the switch, replace it with the new switch. The only thing that you need to be careful about is observing that each switch has got, if it will focus, come on iPhone, bang, it's got like a little groove in there, just make sure that's horizontal so a, so you, um, your switches are going in the same way that the other ones are. So once you've done that, you, a desoldering gun is very helpful here as well, just heat it up, hit, hit it with the suction gun and it'll suck the solder right off, you swap it out, resolder, good to go. Now where the washers come in is you want to put a washer on these four screws there on both the top and also on the bottom line here. And so that, oh man, that just raises up the pedal enough just to give you like a good contact without being without being too much. See that? Just drop it over the top. Oh, can you do it? No, he cannot. You get the idea. Watch this magic edit. Bang! And there you have your little washers on all four screws. Just flip your board back over, chuck them in there, easy as you like. And yeah, screw them back in, attach your little cables again, screw them back up and that should be good. Man, that's all there is to it. Just screw it all back together. Oh yeah. Easy, reliable switching. Cheers. Hope you enjoy. Tim Wynn.